Yeah, I've taken a couple of weather facts charts off the uh, weather facts printer, put them at the nav station here with my uh, passage chart. If I was going to say head up to Bermuda or maybe start looking for a, a time frame when I was going to be leaving for an long passage, I would lay them out on the chart table like this. These are a couple of weather facts charts from uh, three or four days ago. I generally will write, uh, say this time this is a 24-hour wind and weather, excuse me, wind and wave chart. I'll just generally jot that in pencil there. And of course, it's printed right here what the uh, times and ballads is. And the bottom of each chart, of course, is the date and the time that it was transmitted. That's how the time it was transmitted on the radio. And of course, they also give you the time that the chart is valid for. So the time the chart was drawn and the time it was valid for is right there on the chart. Here's a gale warning chart from a couple of days ago showing a 48-hour gale warning forecast. Here is a current surface analysis, excuse me, a current wind and wave analysis, or what they call surface analysis, showing the wind and wave directions. And here is a 24-hour uh, surface analysis forecast. Now I'm going to show you specifically here. You notice these dark lines here going through. That's when I was actually transmitting on the single sideband while I was receiving this weather chart. Uh, transmitting to uh, WLO and then talking to WLO, that kind of thing. Notice there's a couple of minutes that pass through here. And uh, then on another chart here, later on, you'll see some lines on that one as well. But uh, these are the, basically the charts that I just took off the, uh, the weather facts a few minutes ago. And as I said, if I was looking at my um, Got a low pressure here in 24 hours, and look at those isobars. I definitely would not want to be out there uh, in the Gulf Stream off the coast of the Carolinas uh, today, or excuse me, in the next 24 hours or so. Uh, this is the front that uh, just came through here um, last night, and we've got two fronts back to back that are trailing each other. And let me tell you, that's a hell of a low pressure out there. Uh, it's only the uh, 10th of February, and um, fronts are still pretty doggone strong this time of year. But if the weather wasn't like this, or say like uh, like it is here in the next few days, I would certainly take these charts and I would evaluate the weather that was coming up and look at my planning chart. By the way, please forgive this old chart. This chart's about 35, 40 years old. It's been across the Atlantic a few times. Uh, I use this chart in uh, seminars and in training, things like that. So it's been with me in my briefcase and all you know across the world for the last 30 some 40 years. And um, so it's got lots of old writings and stuff on it, but it's still very valid. I mean, the ocean hasn't changed. The continents haven't moved at all. So it's a wonderful chart. Uh, take a look here. This is just uh, this is what I refer to as a basic overall plan just to follow the Gulf Stream as you Gulf Stream travels up across the, the western edge along the continental shelf here. If you were to head off, say, to the Azores, something like that. Of course, this is a very, very, very general idea. This is when you're initial planning, and that's when you take your weather charts here, and you look at what weather your winds and weather you're going to have, and then you determine where you're going to sail to, because based on the wind. Of course, looking at this chart here, I would definitely not be out there with some north winds. That's uh, particularly with those isobars, it's not going to be nice. But the one thing that's very nice about having a paper chart in your hand is um, you know, I mean, I could do this on a laptop if I wanted to, but trying to hang on to a laptop or even a desktop computer at sea and trying to manipulate a mouse and all that way, trying to hang on, paper charts work very, very well. Again, uh, these are surface charts. The 500 millibar charts are really nice because it gives you an early warning or I should say uh, advanced information as far as planning what weather conditions you're going to have. But uh, preliminarily, I just grabbed the, uh, the surface charts. That happened to be what was printing this afternoon. Uh, again, this is all within the last hour. I tore these off the weather facts just in the last hour while I was doing the DSC test calls and other things here on the boat. So I've had no pre-planning to produce this video at all. I'm just right off the fly. Like somebody said, hey, I'm out here. I need some weather information. Can you help me with that? Or, geez, I need some help planning something today. Uh, again, no pre-planning that I've done so far. But taking a look at this, you'll notice that um, I'm trying to zoom the camera in without screwing up here, but we've got another front coming through in 48 hours. These two fronts will be well off here. But you'll still notice how far down these fronts go. Even though the isobars are pretty tight up here and they get down here, still, even into the central uh, southern Bahamas in here 
and even down into the northern edges of the Caribbean. So even though the weather won't be bad down there, they're still feeling some of this continental weather. We've had um, you know, record snowfall in Boston and across Massachusetts, and that I think Worcester Mass is up to 90-some inches of snow this season, and that's a, a, certainly a record. But looking at central and south Florida here, you'll notice that it's not bad weather here in the next two days, or excuse me, in, a, in about two days. Want to go out for a quick day sail, you'd be okay. But still, definitely not weather you'd be wanting to plan to go across the ocean in. But again, if this weather chart was better, you'd take that information here and you'd go, oh, well, gosh, let's see, maybe I'm going to have some winds out of the, the east for a couple of days. I'd head north. And then maybe the winds are going to turn out of the northwest, and then I can start heading out this way. And that's just a general idea of give you an idea of how you can start your, your passage planning. Remember, when you're out there, you're going to sail with the weather that you have. But knowing what the weather is going to be like a couple of days ahead of time allows you to determine whether you're going to go east or you're going to northeast or you're going to go north. Heck, whether you're going to turn south and go the other direction. You know, get in better weather. You're not going to be able to outrun one of these fronts. These fronts scream across. You're never going to outrun any of this stuff. Uh, and I don't care if you're in a 60-foot gunboat and you think you can outrun it. You're not. Um, you know, you can get out of the way of a, a slow-moving uh, trough, but you're not going to get out of the way of one of these fronts or one of these, these big lows. That just isn't going to happen. But knowing what your weather is going to be in a few days allows you to make a decision as to where you're going to sail and how you're going to sail. And hey, even if you can't get out of the way of it and you're going to get hit, at least you'll be prepared for it. I hope this, uh, elimin this uh, preliminary discussion of weather charts, weather facts, and things like that, uh, you find helpful. Four, there are warnings on all stations to this.